A message from the Commandant of the Marine Corps. November 10th, 2022. We inherit and take pride in this reputation evolved over time by Marines acquitting themselves with honor and distinction on every battlefield in every clime and place. Battlefields change and Marines have always adapted to the environment and the changing character of war. But the reason we fight and win is immutable. It's the individual warfighters and their love for each other that makes our Corps as formidable a force today as it has been for the past 247 years. It's our ethos and our unapologetic resolve to be the most capable and lethal fighting force that sets us apart from the rest. Happy 247th birthday, Marines. And happy birthday to you guys, all my Marine Corps brothers and sisters out there watching this video. Today is a special anniversary uh, video as we look into Tales of the Marine Corps Semper Fi, issue number one, published by Marvel in 1988. Now, as many of you know, I served from 2016 to 2021, serving with the incredible 1-7 and 3-11. I served as an artillery officer for those years with combat deployments and serving with some of the best men and women I still know to date. And it is no different in some of these issues of these comics that portray Marines and their brotherhood and sisterhood to each other. It's also exemplified in the Commandant's message that we got this year for our 247th birthday of excellence. So if you guys watched my previous video today on the Fight in Marines issue, this is something a little bit different. We have a huge artist on this, uh, on this issue of John Severin. You guys mo most notably have seen his artwork from Marvel and other comics within that era that kind of were Western and war, that type of theme for these books. And he is a fantastic artist for this type of era and for this type of theme within these books. We get our first story in this book that takes place in 1968, and then the second story in the issue takes place on Tarawa, which if you guys, like I said, watched the previous video that I posted, um, that's also where that story takes place as well. As you can tell, Tarawa is a culturally significant battle for the Marines, for the Marine Corps, with what what it entailed to take that island and the lives that were lost and what happened there, it's it, it's gruesome, it's, it's excruciating, but it also portrays extreme heroism in the face of danger. So I also mentioned in the previous video that my grandfather served in World War II and wrote a short book about it in this book called Tarawa, A Battle Remembered. So Tarawa has a very intimate place for me and, and my heart because, uh, you know, one of my family members served there and wrote about it. So I kind of saw through his eyes this kind of secondhand experience of what Tarawa was like. And some of these comics, I think, do a good job of portraying that. Fighting Marines did it a little bit, but in this issue in particular, it does it even more so, and it's much more gruesome. So let's go ahead and take a look at this issue of Tales of the Marine Corps, Semper Fi, issue number one, published by Marvel from 1988. One of my favorite, favorite things that they used to do back in the day of like 80s and 90s was the, the little text box up here, the little logo box. And I thought that it was so rad that they actually have a Marine in his blues uniform. It looks like a sergeant or staff sergeant maybe. And uh, he's got the dress blues looking sharp as hell. Because hey, let, let's just face it, we all know that the Marine Corps uniforms are, are, are some of the best uniforms, if not the best uniforms in the military. Um, so we open up and the title says, Since the birth of the United States Marine Corps on November 10th, 1775, the Whittier family has served their corps and country. This is their story. So this is called Reunion, uh, written by Michael Palladino and then artist John Severin, like I said earlier. But already we open up to kind of a gruesome, gruesome opening here. So they get ambushed and they take cover behind this tank. So Corporal Whittier and Private Willie get stuck behind this tank hulk and the private is actually hit, and we see here. And that facial expression, man, like I said, 
Severin just does an incredible job with some of the facial expressions here. So Corporal says, shut up, you're not hit that bad. He patches him up and he says, wit were pin, go try and flank that gun, we'll cover. So once he hears that from one of his other Marines, the private says, hey, don't leave me, man. If you leave me, wit, I'll kill you. We're dead if we don't get that gun. Kill me or cover me, I'm going. So Whittier runs over, he's trying to make it to that gun to take out this encampment. He's running, he's running, he says, I'm gonna make it, and then he gets blasted and knocked out. So then we're, we get a flash forward into the future, and they're at a reunion. And we see Whittier here with the pipe and the beard, and it looks like the private has found him. And he says, I've been looking for you, Whittier, remember me? Why didn't you come back? I'm talking to you, man. The NVA got me because you didn't come back. Why not? Some heavy material, for sure. So then we flash back into 1968, and we see that Whittier, his gun is, is his rifle is just riddled with shrapnel. So he throws it away, he kills an enemy, takes the enemy's weapon, almost gets ambushed again, and he says, surprise, I ain't dead yet, throws out a grenade and takes out some more enemies. And he finds that he's actually in the house of a Vietnamese woman and her family where her husband has actually been killed by the VC. So he follows her into a bunker for safety and they begin to talk and they begin to discuss what's going on here and how they can get help and how they can be rescued. And she thinks that he might be part of the VC, that he might be trying to kill her as well. So we flash back to the reunion in Washington where Whittier and the private are talking. And he says, we ran out of ammo, got overrun, and can still see them. Or I can still see them. I got, they bayoneted me, see? And he opens up his shirt. And he goes, what do you want from me, Thorny? I wanted you de dead. I planned it all these years. Now all I want is the truth. Why didn't you come back? And as you can see, there's a little gun barrel here underneath the napkin. So this is a heavy book, man. This is definitely not something for, like, I, I guess, like, your, your average, like, you know, kid, teenager, like this is, these are themes that are present that I'm sure that a lot of Marines deal with. So this is like heavy stuff. This is, this is bold writing and they don't pull their punches on this, which I actually appreciate. And like I said, the artwork is just fantastic here. So the uh, Vietnamese woman tries to kill our hero here, who's all he's trying to do is he's just trying to protect them while also protecting his Marines and finding out a way of getting back to his unit as he's been, you know, how long has he been knocked out for? We have no idea. So she says, you're just as bad as the VC. You'd probably have killed my husband too. And he says, if I were the VC, you'd be dead just like your husband. So he finds his way out and he goes, more dead civilians. How can the VC murder their own people? Because they're finding more and more that the VC have been going around just killing their own civilians, like he said. So he gets onto the roof and he finds and sees that Thorny is behind the tank here. And he sees that Thorny is about to get overrun. And before he can get his rifle out and start taking taking aim and, and firing on some of these uh, VC, something hits him in the chest. He says, the last thing I remember was falling off of that building. I woke up on the repos, which is a hospital ship. And so when Thorny breaks open his shirt, he sees that there's a large scar and a wound from where he was actually hit. So he goes home to his wife and his child and he goes, it was a mistake coming here, Jenny. I don't feel any better. But they stay there because the daughter wants to see their uncle, his brother. And unfortunately, the brother died during combat, so they're going to go see the memorial. But I thought this was kind of an interesting panel. The daughter says, I'm going to be a Marine one day, Daddy, just like you and Uncle Andrew. And, he, and the father says, don't say that, Casey. The Marines are no place for a girl. <laughs> I, I guess it's just a sign of the times. I don't know. So then the daughter says, what about Uncle Timmy, Dad? And he says, come on, Casey, I'll show you. And they go to the memorial. And there is his name etched up on the memorial. And he says, Casey, this is how we remember Timmy. He would have been 35 today. And that's how the story ends. Like I said, not for the faint of heart. It's, it's, a, it's a deep read and it's difficult at some times. 
Then we get the second story, which takes place in Tarawa, and we see this young kid who's pretty frightened. You can see in the artwork that he's younger, he's terrified of what's about to happen. And uh, this other Marine here, he says, this is gonna be easy, Lyle. And he says, I don't know, Red, there's a lot of shooting going on. And then on this page, we see where things kind of start going wrong, where the boats actually get hung up on the coral, on, on the reef right in front of the island, which is actually what happened at, at Tarawa. So the Marines had to swim miles just to get to the shore as they were getting shot at. So once they get to shore, Red, the other Marine says, stick with me, kid, and I'll get you out of this. And the kid says, it's all going wrong. And you can see just how frightened he is in this, this panel here. He says, we're gonna die here. And Red goes, you wanna live forever, kid? And he goes, just to 19, I ain't hardly been kissed yet. And Red says, these guys ain't so tough. And then unfortunately, Red gets taken out in this panel right here. So like I said, this is a tough book to get through, man. This is, this is not easy. This is difficult storytelling in, in terms of just the weight and the impact and, and the stakes that are here. And because these are real life events that are being portrayed and that are being told by, you know, a different writer, it still holds true. You know, these, these things happened. And I'm sure that uh, a lot of these events took place in kind of a similar fashion. So the young kid says, it wasn't supposed to be like this. Why is everybody dying? And that's just some of the sad truth of war and, and battle is that, you know, our, our friends pass away right before us, right next to us, you know, right behind us, they, they pass away, we, we lose them in, in battle. So for some of these books to be portraying this type of loss, this type of death, and these themes throughout the book, it's heavy, it's super adult, and I respect it for what it is and, and for them making those strides because a lot of books wouldn't even dare touch this type of content. So this young kid finally takes off his helmet and he, he's sick of it. He's tired of seeing his friends die. And at the end he goes, I'll kill you with my bare hands as he leaps over the barrier and he starts running towards this encampment of machine guns. And he's getting hit by all sides and he goes, you missed me. And he picks up one of these flamethrowers that's on one of the dead Marines. And he says, now it's my turn. This is for Red as he starts to run towards the, the encampment of machine guns and enemies. And he starts burning the hell out of these guys. And he looks down at his watch after a while and he says, only 20 minutes since we hit the beach? How am I ever going to get out of here? Three days of horror, a lifetime of memories. So it's interesting because issue number two, we get that same story, we leave off at that same story in Tarawa as kind of this through line of some of the issues of Tales of the Marine Corps Semper Fi. So at the back of the books, you actually get, you know, that young kid again. We see him back on Tarawa. We see how he's faring. Um, so the series actually follows that that kid for a good portion of it. Um, and it's pretty interesting to see that they took those liberties and, and really stretched the bounds of what they could write there and how they portrayed that battle. So that is Semper Fi Tales of the Marine Marine Corps issue number one pu published by Marvel um, once again thank you guys so much for watching and once again happy birthday to all my Marine Corps brothers and sisters out there thanks for watching this anniversary uh, episode of one of these fantastic comic book reviews there are plenty of other comics out there that uh, like the NAM or like you know different fighting Air Force fighting Navy fighting Army all, all types of different comics that portray this kind of uh, veteran aspect or military aspect of things. So if you guys have any good recommendations, let me know in the comment section below. What did you guys think of this issue comparatively to Fighting Marines that I reviewed earlier today? Um, once again, like I said, as always, thank you guys for watching. Happy 247th birthday to all my Marines, Semper Fi, and I will see you guys in the next one.